Hi, welcome. Uh, this is the LGBTQ New Americans Project, and my name is Wilfredo Hernandez. I'm the Arts and Culture Group Leader here at Brooklyn Community Pride Center. And I'm Jackie Adashkin, the Public Affairs Director for Immigration Equality. Uh, today's Wednesday, May 31st, 2017, and we are here with... My name is Galina Grabenuk. My short name is Lina, and uh, we are at the Brooklyn Community Pride Center. Welcome, Lena. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I think we can get started, and um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about where you grew up. Uh, so I'm originally from Russia, and I grew up in Rostov. Uh, it's a city located in the south of European part of Russia. And uh, this is where I grew up and spent the 20 years of my life, first years. First 20 years of your life? First 20 years of my life. And uh, what was it like growing up there? Um, it was... It was good. It was... Um, it was 20 years of growing up. <laughs> I think it's... I don't know. It's a lot to, th to say. So, let... Like, I, um, I had a sister. I lived with my parents. Uh, my parents never divorced. Um, I went to uh, to school and then uh, um, until my sixth grade, seventh grade, and then I entered a private school. So I went to private school uh, from age of twelve, uh, from the age of twelve until mm, sixteen, uh, and I studied psychology there. Uh, and after I uh, uh, went to college and I started, I studied finance for four years, and uh, and uh, uh, on my fourth year, I've decided that I really wanted to move, that I wanted to uh, live in a different country, and uh, and I pictured in my mind New York, and I really wanted to to go, and I and I came to New York. And uh, of course, there was the reasons why I wanted to to move, I, why I craved it so much, and uh, and then, uh, in honesty, uh, my family is not that like uh, we were poor basically. So my parents uh, like were trying to give as much as they could. So they uh, provided like a good education. I went to a good school. Um, but then when I decided to uh, to go visit U New York, and initially it was a plan to go for four months for the summer, uh, they didn't have money. But, you know, the universe, it worked out that way that uh, I made it. And uh, it also was very, like, interesting period and, like, how it all came together. And, uh, and this is how I came to New York with no intentions to stay here. But then it happened that I did. So um, how old were you when you came to New York? I was 20. So you were done with school at that time? No, or? actually. Yeah. So that's the funny part <laughs> that upset my parents very much. Because, so, in Russia, you have to study, you, you used to, they changed the educational system, it's different right now, and I don't know the specifics, but uh, at that time, you had to study five years, and after um, five years, you basically graduate, so, or you study four years, and then, uh, and another half year, and then after the half year, you take uh, another semester to write a paper, so it basically, I didn't finish that fifth year. I stayed in New York, and I basically had dropped out from, from the university and I never graduated from college. And um, so what about New York specifically um, were you interested in? What drew you here? I think, you know, to be honestly, to be honest, speaking honestly, <laughs> um, I don't know. I just like had this desire. Maybe it's because of the media and you know that the TV show at the time that was really famous, Sex and the City. You know that everybody been watching, and uh, and I can't say that I really can relate to it right now. You know, every time when I 
I don't, I can't say that I watch it, but I see other people watch it, and uh, and I'm try to tune into it, but I'm like, no, it's, it just doesn't resonate with me anymore. But at that time, I don't know, there was something, maybe other, like, but I think maybe influenced through uh, art, through like movies, and uh, through the like American culture, because uh, we like they don't show as many Russian uh, movies. They don't show ru Russian movies here at all, you know, and uh, uh, American culture is still big in Russia, you know, the music culture, the movies, and like all different aspects, mostly pop, mostly pop. So there's not, maybe right now it's different because I haven't visited uh, Russia for 12 years. Maybe it is different right now, but at that time, uh, where, you know, the, the, like hard rap music, like I wasn't really familiar with that. And mostly they would broadcast, uh, you know, uh, really like a sweet, very like vanilla pop culture, like Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake, and and we would listen to it. And I thought that you know Disney and all of that. This is th that's the America we're all about, <laughs> which isn't. And it makes. Uh, I mean, uh <laughs> um, it isn't. But I, I think it's not because the, it's just because what we were exposed to at that time. So you said you came here not intending to stay, but you no, stayed. No, not at all. I didn't even have in mind that there is a possibility like that. Like my consciousness, like I wouldn't even think that because I always like, I lived with my family till I was, till I moved here. And, uh, uh, and in, in Russia, it's different, maybe like, in, or it is different, because I don't remember my, many of my classmates like being too independent and like working or living outside of the family at the age. There were some people who traveled to uh, my city to study and like uh, some of my classmates, but m for the most part, people like children stay with their families or at least, you know, we also have to take into consideration that I went to a good college, so that were, you know, either kids would really be smart and uh, study really good, or have parents who would support them to go to college. And so that's the life that I've seen back then. And uh, uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about what made you decide to stay here. I really, I felt in Russia that, I, don't, I can't say Russia or, you know, it's just, it was my personal journey that I really wanted something more. And uh, like I went to a really good college. And, um, but it's, it wasn't something that I really was craving. And, um, and again, like I can't say that and my family was poor, you know, and like we didn't have that much of money, but I still was thinking that I should try, you know, something. And then beside that, I also remember myself that, um, you know, the situation at, the, uh, at that time with my family and uh, uh, they didn't understand me and didn't understand my nature. And um, I also couldn't connect with my classmates um, on the like level that I wanted to, because uh, you know I wanted something more. Like I, w I needed that liberation. I wanted to be an artist, and uh, but because like I grew up in kind of um, I can't even say conservative. It, yeah, my parents, but it's um, you know like looking deeper into it. It's not even conservative. They just lived their life like that, you know? And then they thought that what they would, um, you know, how they would uh, been guiding me, that was the way to live life. Because uh, we gone through stages where we would not talk, and you know, with, I'm talking about my parents and me. And uh, we've gone through like a uh, very difficult period, you know, like times, and, um, but I'm very grateful that, like recently, I would say uh, just really recently that we started like really connecting on a more deeper level, and they got me. And I'm like, and I talked to my mom last week. <laughs> or, yeah, like, and I'm like, I, I like, you know, I knocked, like, I don't, I can't even, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, uh, I, 
I reached, you know, I reached deep down in you and like you really now get like who I am, I am you know, like what, what the things what I'm trying to do, you know, what kind of life I want to live. And, uh, and they get it. And because I do need like, and I also realized, you know, how much I need them. I needed their support very much, very much. Why are you guys um, smiling? <laughs> we always fight over who we asks fight the over questions. Ah. So uh, it's like deferring <laughs> to the other person <laughs> to ask the next question. And we may, we defer to each other with the eye contact. <laughs> but then nobody says anything. And you just sit there and ask, what are you doing? Um, so, OK, we're going to go back. And we're going to ask you, uh, sure. what was your favorite activity or thing to do when you were growing up? Oh, so I was very active child. So mm -hmm. I really liked sports. So I would like uh, run with guys, mostly with guys. Like I was very active. Like I played soccer, and then we had this woman, or it was like uh, everyone's grandma that would take everyone to like go on a river and like do some sports uh, exercises and like together. But mostly I've been hanging out with uh, guys. I think I till like. 10 or something like growing up but I I liked I liked um, uh, I like sports I liked Superman uh, movie <laughs> I was thinking that I am the one to <laughs> it was just so funny yeah I wanted to be a hero <laughs> if you were a superhero what would be your superpower um, well, you know, the thing is that, and this is very much related to what I'm doing right now, I wanted to heal the world. <laughs> so that's, uh, and that was the, um, uh, since, since I was very early age, and that's why I also was thinking that, now that I do have, um, like I felt drawn to that kind of field of like helping people on uh, like a deep level. And that was since uh, I was really like uh, little, and that that's what our background is. So where I grew up, like we're we're connected to like Slavic traditions, like natural healing, and uh, and like customs and traditions. Even though like in Russia there are uh, national like religious holidays, but they kind of uh, like the Slavic traditions also override it. And like um, our family never was religious or like I al also can al only remember myself going to like uh, like a church, like I don't know, maybe I went twice there. And, uh, but uh, you know, like, I don't know, we've always been kind of sp spiritual. And so, so your first spiritual powers. <laughs> and you were saying that you're pursuing healing still today, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm a healer. I do healing. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. What would you like to know? Uh, everything. As as okay. much as you can tell us. And as you much say as can... um it, it, you were influenced by by certain practices. Um... You know the thing is I can't say that I was, you know, because somebody somebody just asked me the, this the same question and then you know, and I see the tendency when I speak about it, people start thinking and I'm like, I mean, but it is not that's not what it really means. You know, I can say that so same like we talked earlier, sorry. We talked earlier about your heritage, you know, being from Puerto Rico and all of that, but because that's in your DNA and you can connect to it anytime you, you would like to. So that's why it's the same, like the Slavic traditions and uh, that I am Russian is in my DNA, but I can't say like living here in New York, I've been channeling or like I've been projecting so much uh, Russian energy. Maybe I would, but I wasn't really conscious about it. And uh, so Slavic traditions, and there was something like about the natural healing, you know, just natural remedies, for example, you know, just simple things that, you know, that natural things like natural um, uh, fruits or vegetables can help you heal uh, or can help you co um, 
cope with uh, like common cold or something like that. You know, this kind of stuff that like, can boost your immune system. That's something that I, I knew when I was growing up because it's just a part, part of the culture of that region where I only can speak for my region because I haven't done research, you know, of the whole country. You know, sometimes people ask me some questions, you know, about the whole, the belief system of the whole country. I'm like, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Ooh, that's like, we have to do like a really deep research on that. But um, uh, so that was kind of uh, something that was just there all the time. But I, when I came here or growing up, we wouldn't even the uh, give that too much attention um, and um, it's just part of culture you know same like here something is part part of the culture that no one pay really pays attention to and uh, but then I always had like I did like I was connected with meditation so I've been doing meditation so, since I was really little but it was just a different type of meditation not a regular that you sit like in the, in the pose of lotus um, but I don't know, I was kind of attuned to it, but it was also a long journey for me to understand what it really means. And, uh, and, you know, and then um, here I discovered there is a, such a uh, even path and you can take the, uh, you can go this way and, you know, become and pursue it as a profession or, you know, something that you could practice. So you talk about bringing part of you from home to here and here and, and what was it like? Um, can I can I just say one more last thing about there? Because sure. I started talking about the Slavic traditions and the, you know the the culture, but that's something that I started uh, connecting very recently and revisiting. You know when I realized that roots are really important. Roots are very important. <laughs> that like you really no, but seriously, you know, you have to know where you came from. You know, like you know, just like talking about the physical level. You, it's really important. You know, um, uh, culture and then parents and uh, you know and then lineage. Where it's really, really, really important. But uh, and this is something that I when like being an adult, like I made a decision that I. Um, because I had this kind of uh, mixed feelings about Russia, you know, when I moved here and after that. But the same, like, I, I had the feelings, you know, not so uh, pleasant feelings towards my family and, like, you know, our relationships, you know, there was a cause, like, a reason for that and all of that. So and that kind of uh, was related to the, uh, you know, just being Russian and uh, that kind of stuff. But, um, here in New York, <laughs> already on this land, you know, that, that um, I, I found the, um, uh, uh, like I started connecting with uh, spirituality and like spiritual people and, uh, and then I've discovered all, the whole universe of uh, that dimension, of that dimension. And then I reconnected with my roots. So this is how it all happened. And then it, like it, it made all like the sense why what and like you know all the dots were connected thank you sure sorry it's intense no <laughs> it's great it's great when you um when you first came to new york where did you uh where did you go first where did you go come to so it's really interesting also another thing because like it's that was a miracle has been happening you know like first thing that i didn't w my family didn't have money to uh, to, uh, to sponsor my trip to New York and also I didn't have anyone that I uh, would go with because I decided I'm gonna go myself and I didn't tell anyone I told, uh, only told my family and one my best friend that also helped me because I I didn't even have the proper pep pep paperwork to apply for the whole thing and it was uh, we missed the deadlines and I also didn't have the uh, the travel passport at that time. So, but uh, also we made that happen, and you know, <laughs> and uh, and also I didn't have anyone that I would uh, go with. So on the day of um, uh, finalizing all the payments with the agency that was doing the whole paperwork, and um, um, uh, does it sound clear that how I speak? Right? Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I meet some, uh, so the person who worked at the agency told me, so listen, there is one person 
She said a few persons. She said a few persons that study at your university, uh, not in the same uh, um, group, you know, because like they're not in the same major, but in different major. And she showed me the picture of a person. She's like, so that person is going to New York too. And I'm like, okay. And so I'm going down the stairs and I meet that person and I just grab her and I'm like, I'm going with you, you know that. She's like, I'm going with my friends. And I'm like, and I'm <laughs> going with you too. <laughs> so she was like, okay. <laughs> but you know, the people in Russia, they're like more open, uh, like or receiving or something like that, you know, in, in times. Um, and so she introduced me to her friends and I came with them. And so by this time, and actually that, the, that it was their idea to stay here. They were thinking, this is how it, com oh, like, it wasn't generated in my mind. So they were thinking that they wanted to, like they were thinking, really deep thinking, whether they're gonna stay here or not. And um, mm, maybe I should have said that. <laughs> I'm getting too excited. Doing great. Maybe we will cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we gotta know this this idea about the who who's had so well please. Um uh, but anyway, so so by this day, um so all of them went back and uh and I stayed. And um uh, the people that I came with and then I was still like in touch and uh, and we connected so deeply the, through that summer and then all of them went back and I stayed. So we actually, so we arrived in a group of people, I arrived in a group of people and we stayed in Brooklyn in uh, their friend's apartment that guest uh, us, hosted us for like, I think I even remember like about like two weeks or something, we stayed with her and then we rented an apartment. And this is where we, we shared an apartment, we lived, and then we went to like uh, work, and we found work, work at the restaurants, and, uh, and this is how it all started. So how did you decide that you were gonna stay? I, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know. Like, I, this time, I, I don't have an answer for, for it. You know, it's just, uh, it just uh, just happened that, like, again, like I had no intentions to stay, but then uh, I don't know. Somehow it came about, and uh, uh, you know, um, and then I've decided that I'm gonna stay. And uh, probably because I don't, I didn't want to go, like. Mm, you know, I did not have this idea, but then somehow it came about. And then I think the reason why I didn't want to go because I felt pressured from, from the family. I really needed space, you know, because I really needed to do my thing, to reveal myself, you know, to build my life the way I wanted it. And I felt that if I'll go back, like, uh, they wouldn't let me do it. Because, and not because they, they just, they didn't even understand it. And mm, like, I think right now they do get it, you know, because I, I do get a lot of support from my, from my family because I really told them that really I need your support. You know, I can't like fighting or all of that. And we also had uh, some other uh, things that happened in the family. Like my father um, got sick so it also affected my mom and it changed her also and like the the way that she viewed the life and um but it shifted the energy and uh but at that time like i just couldn't like i uh i felt that i i wouldn't express myself and i really needed it i expressed myself artistically and uh, like in other ways other ways so everybody that you came with left and how did you go about building a community here? How do I go about building a community here? Yeah, like, you know, how did you... I think like throughout my life here, there, there were a lot of friends that like, 
I was just talking to my mom recently about it, but I, because I don't stay at the same place, um, and I talk about not the physical place, but, uh, you know, like, I don't know, like, it seems like um, people come and go, and it's just like, you know, during one period of time, um, uh, I, like, could have connected with someone and then I, I'm not sure I understand the question so that's why I'm like I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> that's okay. I'm, mostly I'm just trying to find out what it was like for you when you know you came here with these people and then they left and then you're by yourself so how, uh, the thing how is was that, that I stayed so I moved in with um, uh, their friends and it was five guys that I lived with and um, but it was um, like I wasn't really aware that this the transition was uh, um, was hard and difficult. You know, I only realized it after many years. Um, but it, I stayed with them. I can't say that I couldn't like I couldn't really connect with them, and uh, there was like situations, and uh, and I'm not in touch with them anymore. Um, we parted like many years ago, uh, but I lived with them, I would say maybe two years or something, and then I moved out. Yeah, so I, stay, I stayed with them. And what was the most surprising thing about being in New York when you got here? The first, it was just really interesting because when I was on the plane on my way, I felt so damn calm <laughs> because I'm like, this is happening. And I'm like, that was supposed to happen. I don't know. I felt like I didn't have this buzz. Like I felt that even though there was like, it, miraculously I made it. I made it, it was just how all the things came up together. Uh, but on, on the plane, I was like, that's, that's how it should be. Like it should have been. Um, I, when I, ma, when we came, I remember that the, the first thing that, because the uh, girls that I um, came here with, so it wasn't their first time, so they visited New York before, uh, and, um, and, uh, so they were, like, introducing me <laughs> to Brooklyn, so, like, the first thing I remember, oh, you asked me about the fascinating thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you about the least fascinating thing. <laughs> so we got stuck in, in traffic from GFK to Brooklyn, and it was Z100 with the rap music that I was not really uh, familiar with. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> and I remember that it was so hot because it was in June, and, uh, and I'm like, like, dusty uh, roads like I don't know for some I know that the air isn't that dry but it felt that it the, was that the sun was uh, so bright and it was dry air so that was just uh, but okay so the um, the girls that I came with it so they would they been introducing me to to the to Brooklyn and I remember that they said they said something about Dunkin Donuts <laughs> <laughs> but they said like I don't know it was just something that coffee from Dunkin Donuts w w meant something I don't remember exactly but I remember I remember the, all of this the Dunkin Donuts and Baskin Robbins the ice cream you know and uh, and eating you know eating all this stuff that you like I wouldn't put in my mouth right now and uh, you know and we like it <laughs> kids that came from Russia you know like uh, there's there was uh, you know the fast food came from from where <laughs> no okay we don't have that much fast food maybe right now but it, w it was um, it was like um, a, a trendy stuff to go to Mc uh, McDonald's like because uh, I think they opened up uh, McDonald's in uh, in my city like on my second year in college or something like that so i remember we would go but it's not like a regular food that you eat 
because uh, you know R Russian culture they're big in cooking stuff you know like they like potatoes and uh, you know all of that I know <laughs> this is what that's uh, the uh, <laughs> stereotype so that's why I wanted to repeat and see the reaction but not only potatoes <laughs> no we also have a uh, buckwheat and uh, what else rice to rice anyway um, so yeah I remember there was a lot of junk food eaten throughout the summer and uh, and at that time I was uh, not vegetarian so and I remember that we didn't even eat meat so I've gained so much weight by the end of the summer oh goodness no way <laughs> yeah the food was different um, I love New York we visited all the sites you know like regular sites of course we went to Times Square I remember that uh, I think the first time we took a uh, train to Herald Square, so I remember myself um, um, like um, on the escalator going up and you know all these buildings, amazing, you know skyscrapers, uh, scrapers and all of that, you know it was beautiful, it, of course, no I was fascinated about everything, it was beautiful and Brooklyn Bridge and just like hang out, the energy in the city was wonderful it was great and that summer was actually the best time in my life that's why maybe i didn't want to go but then like uh you know like when you go so high you know just like experiencing happiness happiness i would just say happiness because one of the reasons like i didn't feel happy in russia i and i felt uh i felt really uh, like I needed space, you know, like m they wouldn't give me space <laughs> and just like to be me. And then uh, when I was in the company of like, um, amazingly happened that the, the people that I came here with were really amazing people, just like nurturing, loving, you know, like we wouldn't really like, uh, you know, no fighting and uh, and I just felt love, you know, and that this is something that I, I remember that I really craved for, craved for, and uh, it was amazing summer. I remember 4th of July, I worked at the restaurant as a hostess um, on Pier 17 or 16, where they have that sheep, sheep, and uh, so they, we had the fireworks right on the river and like uh, people were jamming into each other and I was just standing there looking and like, okay. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, the garbage <laughs> from the fireworks just, uh, um, go, catches your, <laughs> goes right in your face. Okay. Does it answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. How are you doing? <laughs> um, after all of this, these these great cultural experiences here. Yeah. Um, how how did you go about then making your life here, uh, staying here? Um. So I worked, and um, um, like not not all the time was such a good time. So like that's why you know when you always when you like experience I mean not always but anyway so that was uh, you know the amazing summer the first summer that uh, I spent here and then uh, and then there was bam in reality you know friends uh, uh, went away then my parents were really fr frustrated about my decision and uh, um, and then I worked I worked at the restaurant. So I, I kept working at the restaurants for many years, and uh, and then I, um, meanwhile I tried to pursue uh, arts. So I went to um, to different schools. I went to NYU uh, to get a certificate. So it was not the BA or but um, a, a part of um, continuing education department. So and I completed a uh, certificate in uh, uh, at that, that that time analog uh, filmmaking. Right now they don't have that program anymore because now everything is digital. Um, and then uh, yeah, and then I started studying arts, 
drawing and then singing at uh, started taking singing classes and uh, like viola also um, other things I, um, but mostly I remember I worked a lot and the, uh, the job that I had um, the um, uh, because I remember I s I've been switching a lot of places and uh, and I didn't know English that well like I studied English since I was 12 so I had foundation but still when you move to a different country there is a human factor there is some somebody in front of you is standing and plus I haven't realized that uh, you know like I I've been a transplant and I'm still is you know and I'm still learning by this time and I'm to be honest, right now, even like I'm working on my communicational skills, um, you know, and like in terms of like writing emails, and I think that's the hardest for me right now at the moment. Like I can just really, uh, because I'm just afraid that people won't get me what I mean, and that's that was, I haven't real like at that time I wouldn't realize that that was a problem. Like um, it took me some time to like. You know, like it's just a time the, of transition, you know, like when you, we, you really have to go through it to, but, um, but I started from the bottom. That's, that's how, like I can say, no privilege. <laughs> so when did you find immigration equality? Immigration equality, I found, um, I've heard about immigration equality um, I think 2013, so this is when I went to immigration equality, so beginning of uh, 2013, I'm trying to remember because I, I know that my friend pushed me, she's like, go. And like my, uh, and this is what I was saying, you know, like why I had this situation with my parents, you know, like. I used to be very, uh, you know, like, uh, like sensitive, so I wouldn't approach people. Uh, even like you, a person wouldn't. Uh, I mean, I, I can't speak for other people's experience, like how they would see me or like what would I project. But I wouldn't like really approach. But my friend is like, you have to go. You have to go. You have to go. And then I called immigration equality. And that's actually also another thing, because at that point I was really depressed. And uh, I was illegal for many years at that time. And, um, and then uh, by that time, I haven't been speaking about this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that, you know, because we've gone through so many changes right now with everything and liberation of a um, uh, queer community, you know, because uh, I'm like, I've, I've partaken also in the events that, that like serve our, my, my community. And uh, um, so I feel like there was a lot of healing. <laughs> um, I think 2013. I think, yeah, but the, what I was going to mention is that um, I called them and I'm like, because I, like, I wouldn't even believe that, like, you know, my situation can improve at that point, like, mm, because I, like, I, I said that I, I've been pursuing arts, but I'm like, at that time I was already, like, I didn't have papers at that moment, so, like, and I would, it's just like the doors are not open for you anyway like whether you do it do something or not you know like and I didn't feel completely that I would uh, like belong here but I because I never experienced what it means to belong in the country like on a legal level um, I didn't know that the problem was like you know <laughs> that, that that was the um, the thing uh, but yeah, and I called immigration equality and then they told me and I told them about my situation that I'm from Russia and uh, all of that and I told them even and um, you know the um, 
uh, so according to the law, you have to apply for the to apply to seek asylum within a certain period of time. And by that time, when I went to seek help, I already was in the country for many years, and. Uh, so I had no hope. When I called, I'm like, okay, so they're gonna give me, like, they're gonna just tell me and then I'm gonna get more upset. So this is what I would expect. And then when I called them, I told my situation and then I think they pulled me on hold or something like that. And then already by that time, I've heard the stories that, you know, like you can wait for a couple of months to, to even have uh, like a, any initial interview with uh, the immigration equality and uh, so I was kind of like prepared for that. And they, they told me like, can you come next week? And I'm like, sure. And then I think, or they told me, they told me to, the, we're gonna have a phone call, like a phone conversation, like next week or something. And I agreed. And then they called me back and they said, can you come in even earlier or something like that? Like something, something like that. Uh, so it was just like really fast, and then they saw me, and uh, and I had the my, um, uh, in, in uh, do I call it interview or what what, it, what it's called the intake maybe intake yeah so I had an intake with Pamela, and uh, and I told her like my situation and stuff like that so she collected the information and and I left so. <laughs> And then, and I'm like, you know, like a Russian person, I'm waiting. <laughs> you know, like I, well, I didn't know that the, there was such a thing as follow up. <laughs> and then I think it was a couple of months or something. I don't remember because I, I think I went on, uh, I think it was June 11th or 2013 or something. I think so. And then again, my friend is like, why don't you call them? <laughs> she wasn't that cool. She's like, why don't you call them? And, um, and, uh, and I remember I called and I asked for Pamela and so Pamela is like, what do you want? <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, what's happening? Um, but I don't know like what it was. And then, and then basically they called me <laughs> to, they told me to come back, like almost like right away or something like that, uh, to sign the papers. So the, uh, um, they will start assigning um, a pro bono lawyer for me. So I don't know what, what, what it was about. I'm, it's still a mystery for me <laughs> oh, why I had to call back for that. If you want to cut it out, you can do it. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. And so what happened then with your pro bono lawyer? How did that process go? Um... <clears throat> So um, it's well. My, so my lawyer <laughs> didn't. He didn't think that we're gonna get the. We're gonna win like right away. So he was like, "Oh, they like that was just. I don't know. Like I remember that. Uh, he was like." Um, like you can wait for a long period of time and all of that. And I remember that it was so hard for me to write the things, even write about it. Because, you know, like I, um, so I had multiple uh, um, meetings with him. And uh, I think we had like two or three first meetings where I told him about my, like about my, my story and everything. And I thought that, you know, like he's listening or maybe he even recorded, I don't remember if he recorded. But I thought that, uh, I mean, now it doesn't make sense what I'm speaking, but I thought that he's gonna write it. But like, of course, I'm an applicant, so I have to write it. But it, because I, m at that time, I couldn't write really well. Uh, it took me a long time. And then uh, also, we missed the first um, hearing. And uh, it was because, um, something on his end like he didn't send the uh, the uh, the application or something so we missed that first thing and then so it was probably like in march or something or like spring or i don't know but like we had to wait even longer and then i went for an interview in september and we 
we, uh, we got it. And the officer was really nice. I remember she had a blue eyes and I told her, you have the same eyes like me. And I thought like, oh my God, what am I speaking? <laughs> She's gonna dismiss you. And, but no, she was really nice. And actually I met her after that, just like, it, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw her, I was in the neighborhood of uh, my ex-girlfriend and I was, I, and I walked down the, like to take the train and, um, and I met her. <laughs> it was so funny. I gave her my card. She never responded. <laughs> and so what did it mean to you to get asylum? Okay, so today is the Shavuot. As a pro, uh, it's a. I'm speaking Russian right now. Um, it's a like really great because um, uh, I, the spirituality that I'm connected is uh, Kabbalah. So it's one of the Kabbalistic and also Jewish holidays because uh, both are connected. Uh, or. It's deep subjects. <laughs> I said connected. I dismissed that. Um, related or anyhow. So I remember that um, it, the interview fell on a, um, ho holidays, on the Kabbalistic holidays, on uh, um, Rosh Hashanah, which is Kabbalistically saying it's a day of judgment. <laughs> You're laughing. No, no, <laughs> Did you know about this? No, I'm smiling. No, I'm, just, I'm so interested. It's so interesting because, and I remember that, uh, and I remember that it was a like, uh, very hard period of time because like, uh, I've been struggling with money, I had no money, and, um, um, and also at that time I, left the restaurants like I couldn't work at the restaurants anymore because I wanted to do something more and uh, um, like I really wasn't satisfied with the job that's why I've been switching from one place to another and uh, that was you know not speaking really ni uh, nice language and at that time I think industry was completely different as it is right now people are not being uh, treated way better than I think before um, and they like, and I think individuals become also more, um, you know, they are like step into their power. So no matter what kind of job you do, you can be uh, working at a coffee shop. But it doesn't mean that somebody has to treat you really poorly, you know. And um, uh, so they can st stand up for themselves, or maybe other people could. I couldn't, so that's why uh, there was some friction, fric frictions happening. Um, so at that time, I all I've been doing photography, and uh, and. Uh, and th so why I started saying there was a hard period of time because I also prior to that I want to do astrology chart reading at the Kabbalah Center. <laughs> and so uh, the astrologist that I love very much, so she said like you're going, you know, through the time that there is such a thing as a sudden return. And uh, you know that everyone is going through and then the Saturn brings the things in order, you know, and uh, you know, and like really points to the limitations, like, you know, just the physical limitations and like what you're connected with. And uh, so that's why like it was right in my face, you know, <laughs> there was just a lot of things that needed to, and it's Saturn also deals with authority. And uh, well, we also like talking about the, uh, you know, <laughs> papers and, um, um, and so the interview falls on the judgment day. So for me, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, and they're like, I'm gonna be scrutinized and I don't know. And my lawyer is like, oh. <laughs> I mean, because like, it was just such a horrible and so uh, difficult period of my, of my life, you know, like having no uh, legal status and like no financial support uh, you know like you of course you feel like a plant and like 
anyone can step on you and like do whatever so like you don't have and plus I, I also was not connected with my family the only um, family I had like that's the community the cabal center at that time that, that I received so much support from them and um, and uh, and that basically helped me help me a lot you know through through the years but so the judgment day, we're going for the interview. I'm telling the girl that she has <laughs> a beautiful blue eyes like mine. I mean, I'm not saying that mine, really. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, <coughs> and then uh, I received the decision two weeks after, which is the amazing other holiday. And it's called, uh, oh goodness, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm keep forgetting things now. Um, It'll come back to me. But anyway, it's, a, it's another holiday, but it's just um, uh, the consciousness behind it. You know, the, the, there's a judgment day when we do the work, when we reflect on, uh, you know, and the, it shouldn't sound like we're interpreted in the religious terms, which is, it's just, uh, you know, when you do internal work, when you revisit some areas in your life, when you are like, okay, so these things needs to be brought in order, this should be done or, here maybe I should have said something differently with someone you know it's just like uh, just working self mastery working on yourself you know just consciously conscious approach to life but like you know there are dedicated times or holidays when you you know that you observe it so you like this is the time for you to go deep into work you know like just your internal work so you can become a better person and connect with people on a different level and you know and people will look up to you and uh, and then uh, when we do that work and then we celebrate and this is on the day and it was a shabbat also and like they kabbalistically saying that when the holiday of such a uh, nature falls on the shabbat it's a like it's a big deal you know because everybody are happy you know and dedicated time to have fun right friday night and uh, and i remember so in the morning we went there and we, of course we don't know the decision prior to and uh, and my lawyer was surprised he was surprised but he was happy and um, and uh, and uh, it was uh, it was amazing I felt you know like uh, in spiritual saying I felt high for the first not for the first time I mean like I felt like this like very uh, uplifted uh, when I was in love you know like uh, it happened but um but on the, just like with without um like a, a specific reason like you know like it's not something tangible that you have like do you really carry like your social well, i mean like maybe you do carry your social security but like it this is something that is like no one pays attention to right because it's like uh, it's already given or uh and like and i think maybe speaking when i was illegal and uh also speaking that when i moved here i probably uh, i was young and i it also m m probably like came to my understanding later, like what all of this, like you know the uh, what it all, like what it means. So it was uh, beautiful. It, I remember that it surely made me stronger. I remember, and I remember that I felt that now I can do my things, and now the doors are opened. And uh, I do remember that it was just it was and I you know because um, when you and it's just it's a funny thing because uh, like we're all humans right so what what what's the what's the difference whether you have that paper or not like what's like what are we um, like what's the difference I'm um, like I understand that I understand that there should be um, an order right an organization and uh, but um but maybe different criteria how to get it and like make it i know that there are different factors that we should take into consideration but um 
Yeah, I mean, of course, there's a lot of things to consider, but no, but then, uh, like, whether you have it or not, it's just, it kind of, um, well, you were going to say something? <laughs> <laughs> I want, I need support. Um, anyway, so I remember that uh, it, it, it was magic on it. Like it, it opened the doors and I, I felt that uh, I felt much stronger and uh, I felt uh, more secure, even though like my financial situation didn't change because of that. Um, and I also felt as if now I can allow myself to belong. This is, was something that I felt really like on a deep level because before you kind of uh, like you, you know, the thing is that it, it, this is really important because and for immigrants and uh, for um, like political parties that who oversee this kind of thing is like when you don't have papers, you know, like you also like, like if the person doesn't have papers, you also probably won't be able to expect from that person to contribute as much to the country. You know, I worked, I paid taxes when I even though I was illegal. But um, it is really important, you know, because when to make that happen so a person belongs, so then he can be a part. And then when you're not a part, then, then uh, that you're not, like you're not going to contribute to a community. I went because I studied spirituality and it was about community. It was about like uh, doing work and like, uh, uh, like connecting with other people and like contributing. You know, not doing work, but con contributing. Like, what do you bring to the table? You know, and uh, so I kind of uh, learned that. Uh, but it's um, it's that component that uh, is missing. You know, like if the person does not have this information, and that's why there are different things can can happen. Um, and I'm talking. Um, I don't know, it's uh, something like that. Thank you for that. <clears throat> what is your life like now? It's challenging. <laughs> it's challenging, but I think, um, I think I'm very grateful for everything. It was really difficult after the inauguration. It was really difficult and uh, and right now, and I've lived for, um, like I live in the city in Manhattan, and I've lived, um, it's called John Dark Residence, and uh, it's a dormitory for women. And uh, it was established uh, like in the beginning of the century or something, it's called John Dark, if I, I think I said it, but anyway. Um, and it's run by a Catholic, uh, nonprofit Catholic organization. And, um, and so they basically, their mission is to support women um, foreign or uh, domestic, can I say that? Or like native, uh, like or American, uh, or a citizen who, is, uh, but who, who is in need of um, uh, like affordable living and safe place. And I'm very grateful. I've been with them. My uh, my lease my lease is up <laughs> soon. Uh, but. Um, but it was really hard to be in the city at that time, like uh, after the inauguration, because of the march and everything. Oh my God, the energy was, uh, some people wouldn't notice it, but I couldn't find myself but be uh, marching. And I was screaming like hell. And then I think because I was screaming, because the, you know, the crowd is just moving and like, and I just like, oh, and I went by myself. <laughs> and, um, and I screamed, and I remember, and uh, Schumer came out. <laughs> it was just so funny. Um, but uh, yeah, but I think that, that this, because um, I'm, I'm going through th transition right now, so I'm really pursuing what I'm doing right now. Um, um, healing work and uh, so that's, um, was it not only because of, um, because of the work, but all the different circumstances, but I'm very happy and I'm really, um, 
grateful for everything but because it's a part of my process i'm very grateful because like i'm learning so much things and like some things do make so much sense to me and uh, uh you know just in terms like even like what's happening politically and uh culturally and uh you know what uh, m- uh communities are supported by who support them and uh what communities are not acknowledged and um and also, you know, what's kind of like, because I've been connected to spirituality for a long time. So I think, um, and plus my family, you know, even though we had the friction, you know, and then we also had to come to terms when I came out as a gay. Um, but um, they also, they gave me a, a good foundation. And I think my, all this in mixture gives me like, um, you know, like, a lot of things that I can use right now and like contribute to the to 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 where I live right now and I live in New York. I was gonna say something else, but I had forgot. And I still don't remember what's the name of the holiday. <laughs> um, it's okay if you remember later. You can always come back and tell us. <laughs> no pressure. Um. So do you have friends and family? Oh, family is back home, but family is back home. I have a sister, and um, she uh, she has a son, and he's four. He's gonna be five. Oh my god, he's so cute. Goodness, <laughs> kids. Oh my goodness. Do they ever come to visit? No. Well, the thing is, like, so my mom tried to come. Um, years ago uh but um the situation between russia and that time between russia and the united states so they she applied to for a visa but uh they rejected it and um and i like so she couldn't make it i did go meet her uh we um, decided to meet in Israel. Um, so we met after 10 years not seeing each other in uh, December of 2015 at my birthday. It was difficult. God damn it. And well, oh my goodness. We were, I was screaming at her so much. Well, she needed to wake up. <laughs> no, but seriously, she's like, uh, and I, I, but I feel that, you know, because we also, we couldn't find an understanding between each other, but uh, because I am a spiritual person and m- my parents, like, I know that, like, I, I like when, you know, there is a resolution and we come to peace, you know, with, um, you know, like, because we, mm, even sometimes when we meet people that we love so much, you know, then we, like, we still, we fight and then we go apart. But I'm like, no, but you're special. You can't leave like this. You know, we have to come to, like, a resolution, solution, like, um, resolution to some conclusion, like, nice conclusion. And because um, I love special people. My, <laughs> you can't leave me. Um, um, but um, yeah, so we, I, she needed the, that kind of charge. And, uh, and also I think at that time I, I, I didn't know completely like what, was the pro- what, what the problem was. And, um, and um, yeah, but that it was really, 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 like the first, the first day was fine. I think the second half was fine. And then it was a lot of uh, things that I didn't feel like. When I w- w- a jump on a plane, I'm like, oh. I was just like, oh my goodness. It was, it was hard, heavy, very heavy. She knows. So I'm like, I'm not just talking to you. Like, oh. She knows it. What do you do for fun? I do for fun. Well, right now, for fun, oh my goodness. (laughs) Um, (coughs) 
Well, I like meditate very much. I like, I love hanging out in nature. I love. Last week, it was raining. I don't remember which day it was. I think Tuesday or something like that. And um, it was like drizzling, like not really heavy pouring. But I, and I had a conversation with a friend of mine and we just talked about park or something. And I haven't gone to a park because I'm like, right now I'm so focused. I'm working on my practice and establishing practice, like uh, working on, um, I'm also going to be featured in the, um, in the magazine and um, very grateful and uh, you know and I'm working right now on uh, like writing uh, some stuff for it so I'm like really in, in it and um, and plus um, like photography and video it, it isn't really like season when it's really really busy like I'm still I, I can say I'm still struggling financially like very much but um, but I'm always like, oh my god, I need to work, I need to work, and like find connections, emails, or like improve my communicational skills and all of that. I'm like, oh my goodness, again, I need to learn something, never stopping, you know. So appreciate, you know, those people who grew up here, you speak the language, like, crest the opportunity. Um, and I've decided I'm gonna go in to the park. It's raining, perfect. I mean, like, Yes, I was thinking it's perfect. <laughs> and I came to Central Park. And what do you think I found there? No people. <laughs> Ever want to have like a, um, a $6, I'm counting the, uh, the how much money you're going to spend for a MetroCard um, on your ride, retreat in New York City. Go to Central Park, please. Just like sit by the tree, hug the tree. Let them think you're weird. I do it. And uh, just connect with uh, nature and just like quietly sit. Amazing if you uh, do a little bit research on like grounded meditation. You know, it's really awesome just like to take, uh, shake off the stress. And, uh, and plus there are uh, health benefits also like being in nature and inhaling the uh, uh, fresh air, oxygen, and stuff like that. And plus ions, you know, it was raining. Um, and um, I love to do that for fun. And uh, so as much as I can, I love hanging out in the park. Uh, not so much I like to go to clubs. Not my alley right now. Like, I've been going to clubs, but I would never connect. Like never, never. Like m maybe sometimes, but it's like, but um, most of the time it's just like very heavy. Like I have maybe at times I had no choice, but maybe I would pretend that I'm having fun, you know, because maybe I just didn't know what the real life meant at that time. And you know, I think we all do until we really get it, like what the life is all about, and like uh, you know how much goodness it has. Oh my goodness, and. Um, um, but right now, I, I think it's, it depends on who I hang out with very much. I can say that I have many friends because um, I'm a little, I'm very deep person, so I'm like really, but, um, and uh, because I've, I've been, uh, you know, I constantly learn something and do something and um, so for this reason, I think that we I part well, like we parted with um, many people that I used to hang out. But uh, I do have a uh, few friends that we still fight with. <laughs> <laughs> they think I'm like too spiritual. They'll get it. It's fine. <laughs> I have people who call me after many years and say, oh my God, you were so much more updated at that time I was so stubborn. Like, you know, I'm like, okay. It's difficult at the time though, but I, I, I see, I learn it. I'm like, okay, so I just do your thing. I'm not an angel, no. <laughs> no, not at all. <coughs> um, 
I'm just mm-hmm. in a good mood today. <laughs> uh, in closing, what um, what do you want people to know about LGBTQ immigrants? Um, LGBT immigrants are um, human, same like other people. And um, I don't know, they just like me. We're all the same. We all want to be happy. We all want to have stability and security in life. We want to do good. But most of the time, we want to experience love, you know? And, uh, and um, uh, like, it's, it's a mastery. I was just writing about this. Because it's, it, is, um, it is, like, it takes practice to uh, learn to receive it and, uh, and to give it as well, you know? But for those people who uh, have empathy or uh, towards the LGBT community or who just, you know, just have big heart and like share love unconditionally. So share that love with LGBTQ community. And, you know, sometimes maybe the, some of the members uh, have need some time to learn how to receive it. Um, and we have to understand that, um, you know, because it's not easy path um we are unconventional so we are uh, not what uh you know what it would what it's kind of was it wasn't since the beginning of time come on you native americans had five genders so it's like uh and uh, i know that we speak that we are like civilized uh world and uh, all of that, but um, anyway, so we, if we look at the history, there were always gay, lesbians, and uh, um, but what I was gonna say, uh, yeah, just please share a little bit of love, because, you know, it's not easy path to follow your heart, um, but it's um, love wins, and um, and for those LGBT commu- members who know how to share love, share love, and share even with those people who don't understand you, or you know, because there there will be a time that they un- will get it. Uh, but of course, uh, on b- like both parties, I'm talking about the uh, supporters uh, of LGBT community who have an ability to share unconditional love and uh, those members of LGBT community who also have an ability to share unconditional love um, do it safely (laughs) (laughs) self-care is very important is there anything else you want to add yeah, guys, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I had an amazing time. Um, I hope that you had too. And yeah, it was great and amazing just to sit down with you and share, you know, a little bit of uh, my life with you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I think I, w- I, think I was like <laughs> talking in this way. I'm like, I would never address anything to you. Thank you, we really appreciate it. Thank you, you very much. My pleasure. My pleasure.